Hey folks, I'm going to try singing one of, the, one of the best songs I know, one of the best folk songs I know. It's an old Irish song. Uh, it's called Kill Kelly Ireland. Uh, it's, it's probably the saddest song you've ever heard. It's a very sad song. Just a fun fact for you guys. I've played this song probably a hundred times. No, roughly a hundred times. It took me about 50 times playing it before I could remember all the words and I could get through it without without crying, without tearing up and my voice starts wavering. It's a very sad but beautifully written song and it just it carries this, I don't know, this powerful emotional energy about it because it's sad but it's also beautiful that when I sing it, the more I get into it, the more, the more likely I am to tear up, uh, to start crying and my voice will go. So, for the sake of experimentation, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to record it and sing it and see what happens. Good chance to tear up, but I guess we'll find out. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 60, my dear and loving son John. Your good friend, the schoolmaster, Pat McNamara, so good as to write these words down. Brothers have all gone fine work in England, the house is so empty and sad. When the crop of potatoes is sorely infected, a third to a half of them bad. But your sister Bridget and Patrick O'Donnell are going to be married in June. And your mother says not to work on the railroad and be sure to come home. sex of her own and you say you found work but you don't say what kind or when you'll be coming back home <laughs> Kelly Ireland 18 and 18 my dear sons Michael and John I'm sorry Church in Kilkelly, your brothers and Bridget were there. There's no need to worry, she died very quickly. Remember her in your prayer. It's so good to hear that Michael's returning with money he's sure to buy land. As the crops have been poor and people are selling at any price that they Send me, I'm still about my own. Michael has built himself a fine house, and Bridget's daughters have grown. Thank you for sending your family picture, they're all lovely women and men. And you say you may even come for a visit. Brother John, I'm 
sorry I didn't write to you sooner to tell you the father's passed on. He was living with Bridget, she says he was happy and healthy right down to the end. And now I should have seen him play with the grandchildren of Pat McNamara. We buried him along, say the mother, down in Kilkelly churchyard. Ah, he was a strong and feisty old man, considering his life was so hard. It's funny the way he kept talking about you, he called for you in the end. Ah, why don't you think about coming to visit with 